and number 17, Joel Calise, along with Jamil Hardy, number 15, and rounding off uh, uh, the starting 11, number 18, Joshua Schoon. The substitutes for the Western Eagles are as follows. Number 9, Glenn Walker. Number 19, Okichi Springer. Number 4, Jelani Sielto. Number 13, Jolene John. Number 7, Matthew Waldron. And number 14, Kareem Davison. The head coach for the Western Eagles, Alistair Ramdo. The team manager, Roger Vialva, and physiotherapist, Oswin Birchwood. As the team meets each other, the starting 11 for the Central Jaguars are, and the Central Jaguars are in the blue and black, while the Western Eagles in brilliant and bright orange. The Central Jaguars, goalkeeper number one, Tor Fletcher, wearing the number four, Janique Danzel, number 17, Christian Spence, number 14, Chad Alonso, number 13, Taj Commission, wearing the number eight, Jersey Kyle Ogaro, Mark Robinson, one of the young men on the scholarship, pursuing that scholarship and moving to the KCK College, is wearing number 18, Mark Robinson, Dante Cooper, number 15, Wearing the number 11, Caleb Boyce, and number 10, Kern Roberts, rounding off the starting 11. Number 9, Kasim Ballantyne. The substitutes for the Central Jaguars are Brandon Calise, that's number 22. Uh, number 2 is being worn by Jordan Brito. Uh, Kareem Crichton, that's number 5. Michael Grandison, number 19. Stefan Jennings, number 16. Brandon Kalinda, number 3. Along with Karen James, number 12. Seven, number 7, Shaquem Findlay and Alexis Barnwell, Blackwell. That's uh, number 6. The head coach, Damian Cooper. Assistant coach, Iron James. And physiotherapist, Oswin Birchwood. The referees for the match. Main referee is going to be Justin Thomas. Assistant referee number one, Samantha Kisun. Assistant referee number two, Natalia Williams. And the fourth official, it is Marlon Perus. And March Commissioner, Mauricia Nuss. That's the start of the first game here. GA Super Cup 2022, game one, Western Eagles in the bright orange and the Central Jaguars in blue and black. Central Jaguars having some possession, just building the play a bit, getting a feel of it in the first opening minutes. I think that's direct command of the coach, Mr. Rambi. He wants his players to get a feel of the ball and they're looking well here on the right side. I think the referee spotted an offside. No, 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 no. But that's promising signs for Western Jaguars here.
check, check. Not in. Check, check. One, two. One, one, two. Check, check. Check, check, one, two. Testing, one, two, three, three, two, one. Yeah, yes. On the inside here. The first goal for the orange team. The Western Eagles. by number 15, Jameel Hardy, in the fifth minute. Let's see what the Western Eagles can conjure up here. Of his reach, and that affords 
the Central Jaguars to have it now. And we have Tajik Komisiang. He's a left back. He plays it into Roberts. Is he going to play to Tajik? Roberts still on it. He's asking for a foul, but Joshua Schoon. God, I know that's a, that's a wayward pass, and I think the Western Eagles is looking for danger. The pass is like that. Shaquille Young now he's going to play to Joshua Schoon. I must say Joshua Schoon he's a wonderful center defensive midfielder. He has that ability to destroy plays and break down plays. And I'm looking forward to see him play that role here today. I know normally we and it's a beautiful clip ball and I think he's he's on here now. Kasim is he going to cut inside another shot? He looks to swing it in. And now it's uh, it's one one oh oh yeah. wow what a wonderful scene by Clint Teaser, but the follow up I won't say I must say the defending was very very lackadaisical by the Western Eagles very well lackadaisical defending there and that's a easy goal for Mark Robertson he can ask for easier punks I mean. I mean, some of the players are saying the keeper should have done better, but I think some of the defenders for the Western Eagles should have done better there. The keeper made a save, and it was almost as if they expected better. But 10 minutes have gone, and we have two goals already. <laughs> this, this looks like it might be a basketball score if this continues. Heisman signal it just went outside there. That is Samantha Kisun, the second official. Like I was mentioning before, it's always a lovely sight to see the involvement of women in sport. Whether it be players, whether it be referees, whether it be coaches. Also, too, I, I, I didn't mention this is all respect shown to my Muslim brothers. Obviously, EDU Pretier is coming tomorrow. But back to the action. Joshua Schoon, he moves forward. Kalim Young lost out on it there. Another word. The Central Jack was the ball. I must say, Central Jack was having the more promising side. They have been more penetrating. I think on Ford they will be very tight on Roberts, the number 10. Kern Roberts, he's very skillful. And he's asking for it now. Mark, he cuts inside. He's trying to get it in the box. That's the second time he's tried to get it in again. Oh, that's a wayward pass there. And he's going to spank it. But that's very, very disappointing. From the number 13, Taj Commission. But 10 minutes have played. It's really been action packed. I can't complain of any boredom here in the commentary box from a neutral standpoint. Both teams look like they are out here to score goals, and so it has reflected in the score line. I think um, out of the top two coaches, also Ramdu might be a bit concerned with our side is negotiating the first 10 minutes. It's not similar to how they played the Steelers. Also, I'm very surprised too that Glenn Walker hasn't start the goal scorer for the last game. I don't know if you have any niggly injuries. He's school lost his foot in there, but he did well to, to, ke to keep it. And now it's Baptiste. Look at his speed is something that I want to see in this game here today. I think he was so influential in the in the game against Steelers. Surprised he didn't get mad at the match for how he played. Baptiste, the number six, the left back for Western Eagles. And that's Shaquille Young. He's asking for Baptiste. And look at the speed here, Baptiste. This is the speed I'm talking about. He can play it and he can run it down. And now that 
Long ball from the Batis towards Western Eagles, a corner. And he plays it short. Shaquille Young, is he going to go in the box? He has that wonderful technique. Ozasi lost out and then that's not where you want to lose it. And now the Central Jaguars, they have a counter attack. They have Roberts and Kern Roberts. If, if they could get it to him, oh, that, that's not well played there. And Joshua Spoon, he's driving forward and he plays it. Is he going to let go the trouble? Everyone is asking for the shot. Oh, that's beautiful. And is he going to, oh, this is easy. This is easy. Beautiful, 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 beautiful goal. They took their time. He wasn't rushed there. The number three. He didn't rush the play. He took his time. And he played it across to Joshua Schoon. And Joshua Schoon has his name on the board, on the score sheet. Look back at the replay. That was cool, calm. I must say, Colleen Young, he didn't rush it. He took his time, had the defender on his pants, <laughs> on his back. And that <laughs> couldn't be an easier goal, but we are just 15 minutes in, and it's 2-1 already to the Western Eagles. <laughs> if we continue like this, <laughs> I think <laughs> we in for a basketball score. But Anzel plays it all the way across. I think um, Damian Cooper, he should some have some sort of regrouping defensively because attacking-wise, they're very promising, but defensively, I think they're weak. To have conceded two already in 15 minutes. Oh, that's beautiful skill. <laughs> Wonderful skill, actually. indicating an indirect free kick so it must be touched by someone else and they swing it in the box it's a bit short Kareem actually m swiped and a miss well, nothing devastated happened from that there and now Kyle is on it now in the center of the pitch and they support to Dante Dante plays it forward Try to take on his counterpart there on the right flank. But good defending by Elcock. Oh, that just went out there. He would be disappointed that he couldn't have kept that in. But again, the skill, the skill move looked good there. It looked like something could have come out of that attack. And he's under some pressure. I think some of his some of his counterpart players should tell Joshua Schoon that he's under a bit of pressure. Lost out on it in deep in his half. That is not something you would want. I was very surprised in there by the lineswoman that call. I, I'm, a, I'm very surprised that was that was given to the Central Jaguars. But they have it here, not nevertheless. And Tajay Kumbis Young, I think he's going to go long into the box. And yes, he does. Beautiful headed interception. And now Ozazi on it now. And Baptiste, he plays it to Long. And Baptiste back to Long now. 
And he's calling fit on the other side here in the number 15. He doesn't get it. Jamil Hardy, the goal scorer, one of the goal scorers that is. And now Kyle Ogaro, he does the distribution in the center of the park. He plays it to Danzel and Ogaro. Turns and back now to Danzel, the uh, left back. And that's a long ball forward. But uh, I think it was too long for his teammate there. And this isn't a good side. I think that's, if I'm mistaken, that's Kaleem Young on, on the ground. If I'm not mistaken, he, when you see players go down with no hard tackle, that doesn't look well. This is this isn't good signs here because Kaleem was the reason for the second goal. I think he probably just went down to get some medical attention because it could develop into something worse. This is Group A action. And if you don't know, the tournament is sponsored by OCA Fashion and Ball Group Group, Mario's Pizza, come in and get it, and Gateway Athletics. Jamil Hardy with a missed pass there. Gives it now to the Central Jaguars. And Christian Spence plays it now to Danzel. Danzel with a long ball to Robert. But wonderful headed interception there by Joel Kaliste. I think that's offside. Has to be offside. I think for the first 20 minutes, the game panned out. From a neutral point of view, very exciting stuff. End to end stuff here in the Marvin Lee. I think that's just a snapshot of what is to come because these two teams are offensively at it, being 2 on already in just the first 20 minutes. Uh, that's a bit dangerous there in the back, and he plays it all the way back now to Fletcher, the keeper. And Ozazi with his high press awards him the ball now. And now Shaquille long on it. Plays it to and now it's Baptiste. Baptiste all the way back to Akeem. And Joshua Schoon plays it forward. And now Hardy. This is beautiful one touch stuff here from. And now Joel has it now. He plays it to Schoon. And the Western Eagles finally having a bit of possession. He lost out on the midfield there, but the referee. Natalia Williams saw an infringement and she blowed rightfully so. Uh, Baptiste with a, I think that's a long range effort. A bit of optimistic effort for me. Danzel on it now. He plays it to Dante Cooper. Dante Cooper with a bit of skill. And 
Mark Axen for it. But I think that was just a bit on the heavy side there from his teammate. Now Ash to school. Now back to Ash. Deep into the plan. They play to Zazi. He holds it up well. Good, beautiful, spicy play in here from the Western Eagles. They're going to the beat of the rhythm section. And again, we we have the number three. On the ground in pain, Kalim Young. I think he's asking for a bit of protection from the referee. Wonderful clearance. A, a bit high for me, and now a Chucky Young. He plays it to Schoon, and now Schoon takes a whoa. That was wonderful one touch, and that's a wonderful roly poly there by Kyle. And a good turn now. <laughs> by Dante Cooper, and he's very skillful, Dante. He's showing his skill, and now, I think this is looking very dangerous. We have four in the box. Is there gonna be something special? And I think the keeper interpreted that play clean Caesar very well. And it was Ozzy on it now. He plays it to Baptiste. Is he gonna use his electrifying pace on the line? He uses it. And look at the speed now, Baptiste. This is the speed I'm talking about. This is what this is what we came here to see, Baptiste. That's an electrifying pace that we love to see here at the Marvin Lee in the J Super Cup. Almost Garrett Bale like there, Baptiste. He has that extra step on defenders that's almost mind blowing. He has defenders look like they're running backwards almost. And now it's to Kyle, the center defensive midfielder. He have been playing really well too today. This is two teams, I must say. Two head coaches with their minds on and it's a bit of a chess match even though we have a, a lot of goals already. Tactically, I'm seeing the teams doing something well and we have an overlapping run. Now from the number 13, Taj, here could be seeing and he has time and space. Is he gonna swing it in? He does. And who's on top? We have a Dante Cooper, but Joshua Schoon again coming in and showing why. He's something to handle. And Mark, the school scorer, he's on it now. I must mention that we haven't seen much of Kern Roberts, the number 10, since he sparked his uh, influence in the first half. I think they should get him on the ball a bit more often if they want to. I mean, they, they've seen a goal already, but I think if they want to have more threat onto the goal, I think they need to involve Kern Roberts a bit more. He's very skillful on it. And uh, this is about the third time we've seen the number three, Kalim Young, on the ground, I think. I think the coach. Um, Ram Doom, he, he might have to make a hard decision. He might have to take off Kaleem, the goal scorer, and it, it does look like that's the end for Kaleem Young. Really disappointing. He would be disappointed that he's off so early. Just 26 minutes in. And interesting here, yeah, Ozazi swapped sides. He's on the right flank. He tried to TP, TP2 is way out of, out of trouble. Too much to handle. And that's a brilliant, oh, that's wonderful interception by Ash. And now, Ozazi has time and space, and he plays it into Joshua Schoon, and he does a wonderful skill, and now it's Shaquille. Plays it all the way across. Oh, I think that's just, no, it's, it's a good pass. But good defending by the right back for 
the Central Jaguars. And I think we're going to have an early substitution due to injury woos for the Western Eagles. I mean, it's always never a good sight to see a substitution being made so early in the game. Kalim Young, the goal scorer, actually, he's off early. And he's going to be replaced by the Glenn Walker. He actually scored a goal against the Steelers. And surprisingly, he hasn't started here today. I think that, I wasn't sure the reason for that, but he was actually man of the match too as well. And now Glenn Walker, they call him Chubby. He's on it now. And now Baptiste. He swings it in. And this one looks a little bit dangerous. Shaquille Young, he fakes again. And has a shot, Shaquille Young. <laughs> inside with his right foot and spanked it with the left but I think he led back a bit too much and that one high wide and not too handsome from Shaquille Young there I must say Dante he's really skillful Dante Cooper this this young this youngster is, is just threat and I think this one is looking very dangerous is he gonna lob the keeper what he's gonna do yes he loves him and that's class that is class that is class that is special that is beautiful and he did a somersault to celebrate with it as well <laughs> If you look at the replay, I called for the lobby, did the lobby, did the chip, and it was just underneath the bar. And that, again, is I think that's a brace, if I'm not mistaken, from Mark Robertson. That's a second one for Mark. And it's two all in the first 30 minutes. That's a brace for him, actually. This, this is two all in 30 minutes. This... This is exciting stuff here in the Marvin Lee. The two coaches offensively at it. But that was really classy like there from Mark Robinson, showing that he's poised, showing he's confident, showing he have that composure under pressure to just lob it over the keeper and put it into the back of the net, Mark Robinson. And we have Ozazi. Is he going to play Ozazi? I thought he would have played him there. That's beautiful from school, nah. That's a little, a little dummy of it. Had the defender biting at his ankles. And so rightfully called from the first official, Natalia. Shaquille Young again. He's, he have been really nice to watch building the play. He's been very flamboyant, but he plays very simple. And those are the kind of players you need in your side. And sometimes you need some simplicity. Those are the ones that could get the job done. And we have a overlapping run from the number 17, Joel. Is he going to go inside? Wonderful defending there from the opposite number. Well back on it and he swung it in the box to no one really. And now Joshua Schoon on it. Is he gonna do something a little special? He doesn't. <laughs> but we are just 31 minutes in and I can't mention more and more again that it's two all and if I was one of the coaches, I don't know if I would want to want this to continue, I think. I mean, from a neutral point of view, we want more goals. But from a tactical point of view, it's, it's something that has you, gives you that headache in the back of your head. You don't want to know that you go up again and defensively you are not sung, then I think you might want to quench the, the game. You might want to kill it off and set up a better defensive line.
And now Dante, he's very skillful, Dante. He plays it across to the right back. And they're asking for a ball inside. He does deliver. What a save. Wow. That's a, that's a picture book save, actually. One from the drawing board. Wow. That almost remind me of a bit of Courtois, actually. Down on his right hand. Very strong right hand. It was a powerful header. And that's a wonderful save to actually get it up and over the bar. I mean, we give a lot of credit to the strikers, but that's brilliant. But we have a swinging cross here, and the keeper again, Kern Caesar, comes out again and does the dirty work for his team. I'm still stunned by that save. It's re really, really a good save. This game is just full of action. Every time I blink, I'm seeing something that has me in awe. I think I need to blink less here <laughs> in the com commentary box. I might miss something. Now the uh, Central Jaguars with a bit of c possession, and they want to—they're gonna want to keep it. And Glenn Walker asking for the referee to give him a fall, but the referee says play on. And now Kumi Siang with a long ball on the inside, and that's a that's a, that's straight to Mark Robertson. He has a brace, not to mention Mark. And another lofted ball to Glenn Walker. Is he going to play to Ozasi? He eventually lost that on it and. Thought he would have blown there, the referee, but Dante with a beautiful ball now on the inside, and this looking dangerous. He has Mark on the inside. Is this a hat trick for Mark? Oh, what a save again. <laughs> Mark could have had his hat trick. I think they are relying too much on this goalkeeper here now, Kun Caesar. That's two brilliant saves from him back to back. And he has Ozazi. Ozazi going to use his speed and time and space. He's going to run at the defender. Is he going to step over? Is he going to do something special? He plays it on the inside, but wonderful slide and tackle by Mark. And he shows that he could come back and do the dirty work defensively as well. Referee didn't. The referee should have. And Kuhn Robertson would, would do it the wonderful distribution, but look at the speed of Mark Baptiste. Even though it was a bit long and it was a good ball, the speed of Baptiste is just ridiculous. I think the Central Jaguars might be a bit disappointed that they, not, they are not leading here 36 minutes in. Two beautiful saves by Kern Caesar. They might be a little bit disappointed that they haven't had the edge here on the Central, on the West, Western Eagles. But good tiki taka football there from the Central Jaguars. I think it was a bit long. Look, look at the speed here again of Batisi. He came from all the way back there and he still made it in front of his lad and still was able to get the throw in. I think they need to utilize 
but he's a bit more down the left flank. Try to get an overlap and run from him. Glenn, good roll up play by Glenn Walker. And it's Joshua Schoon. Wonderful turning there by Shaquille. He has played simple today too as well. And we have a long ball to Joel. But good interception by the counterpart and Kern, Kern Robinson. He plays it now to Dante Cooper. Cooper, he has his lad inside. He's offside a bit, so he doesn't play it. And he's going to do something special here on the left flank. Now he looks for support. And now he plays it to Kyle. Kyle back to Dante Cooper. Is he offside? I wouldn't have played it. He is offside. You have to be mindful of the offside as players as well. That's the mark of good players when they are spatially aware of where the teammates are and if to play it there or not. Not to take away anything from Dante Cooper. He has been playing very well today. Walker with a bit with a bit of skill and good hold up play. Um, since he's come down, he has hold up the ball really well for Western Eagles. Give them that bit of possession deep into the half of the Central Jaguars. And I think he might be a, a key pivot point here for the Western Eagles if they are to get someone or something on the score sheet again. But Ozazi. Just trying to do a bit too much there, Ozazi. Oh, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> with some skill and he has over overlap and run. I think that's Kern Roberts. Is he going to play it inside? Again, Kern sees that come down, but he could swing it back in Kern Roberts. I think he should immediately. But Ash with the wonderful headed interception. and Now, that's a long ball to Baptiste. And this is the speed I'm talking about. Baptiste, oh, just wasn't able to get it under control there, Baptiste. And now Baptiste back on it now. He has another go at it. And he asks for the foul on the referee. Natalia Williams gives him. I don't know if um, the Western Eagles have any free kick specialists. But I would like to see something special. I think they might clip it into the box. They actually played a reverse pass. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's Schoon on the left side. Plays it now to Baptiste. He swings it in immediately. But easy headed out. That's a mistake there. And Kun sees has a spank. But it's only bodies, central bodies in front of him. And it's deflected. And That looked a bit peculiar there, I must say. Normally we see players throw their body on the ground, but... It's nice to see that he stayed on his foot. He plays it across to his teammate. Eventually plays it forward and there's a bit. I think I think on the right flank he needs to play it to his foot. No way you're gonna win any speed battle against Batiste. It's just I know I know you're not gonna win against that. It doesn't make sense. Glenn Walker with a beautiful hold up ability. Defender bites at his ankles a bit there, and he that gives the Western Eagles a throw in. I think the two sides. Since the game has started, it's two all already 30 in 30 minutes. 
I think the two sides now are just trying to catch a little breather. We're not seeing the high press again from the Central Jaguars. And the speed of the game has slowed down a little bit. I don't blame none of the two sides because it's really been a lot going on. But Dante now trying to do a bit too much there, Dante. And the coach for the Central Jaguars asking his team to push up a bit. There should be a clearance here from Twin Cities. Uh, that's actually brilliant way to keep it. We have Joel with a, with a run that might be something to watch. They go on the next side and then look at Baptiste and the speed here now. And is Baptiste going to use his speed? He does. He takes on one. He's really going to swing it in. He does swing it in. It was a hard driven cross along the box, the ground of the box. Wonderful skill, actually. Some of the players asking for fouls and the referee says play on. I think the referee wants some of the players to stay on their feet. And I don't give her wrong. The Central Jaguars throwing there to the shock of all the Western Eagle players. A bit strange, the call there from the linesman. Baptiste on it now. Keeps it and now he plays it back to Ash. Is he gonna go back to the keeper? Is he gonna go long? He goes long and and that's a blast to end the first half for the GA Super Cup Western Eagles versus the Central Jaguars. Two all. We have an embrace by Mark Robinson. Then we have an one from Khalif um, Jamil Hardy. And one from Joshua Schoon, the number 18. It's been a really action-packed first half. Those two goals scoring in the first 30 minutes. I don't think you should go anywhere if you're here live on the live stream. Because this has been end-to-end -end stuff between the two sides. If I didn't mention... Cup sponsored by the OCA Fashion Ballroom Group Mario Pizza. Come and get it and get away athletics. It's too all here in the Marvin Lee. I, I wouldn't suggest you go anywhere too far. Because it's really been action packed. And then we'll return after the short commercial break.
My name is Darrell Williams, Communications Officer on behalf of Gateway Athletics International. We cordially invite you to our 2022 launch and play a draft for our highly anticipated GA Super Cup 2022. As one of the two female commissioners in a traditionally male-dominated and administered sport, I would like to spend a few moments looking at two very small and simple words. Those words are hopes and dreams. This Super Cup will act as a conduit for national recruitment. Through this process, we will incorporate the development and advancement of football through great gateways programs as our players and teams build from inward out to become the very best. Coming into the league, I'm really excited and looking forward to playing with not only my fellow teammates, but also the past players and veterans. Being a past member of the TT Pro League, this is a good opportunity for younger players coming into this GA Super Cup, you know, to market themselves and push towards being called on, on the national team and, and being given opportunities to even go outside of Trinidad and Tobago to further their, their profession. And we are back live in the GA Super Cup. I don't know if you went for anything to eat. A small bite. Just to nibble on because the amount of action I predict in this second half is going to be off the charts. We had two goals in the first 30 minutes. And we had <laughs> two goals each side. And then we had one goal on each side for the first 10 minutes. First five minutes we had two goals from each side. And I think we're going to have more and more goals here in the second half. So, from a neutral point of view, unless the coaches' directions are more on the defensive side, I don't, I don't see why we can't have any more. Must pay special mention to Kern Caesar for making two brilliant one-on-one -on -one saves. One being a header and one being a one-on-one -on -one against Mark Robinson to not give Mark the hat trick. Kern Caesar. I think in the second half too, I am expecting to see a little bit more from Batiste. We expect to see a little bit more of his speed. Be like him, he is. I think also the Central Jaguars will want to have a Roberts a bit more on the ball. He has that spark, he has that quick foot ability. He has that injection of space you want, and now they're asking the a high press immediately. I think we have a, a change that I don't know of. And this looks dangerous. Is he going to let it go? He plays it. Oh! actually dummied it. And now Batiste, look at the speed of Batiste. Oh, wonderful defending there. He played really well there. And he tried to play it long, but I think that was intercepted. And Ozazi, with his skill. The, the youngster, and he Referee eventually blows to help out Ozazi. And Shaquille Young now on it now, and he plays it quick. Back to Shaquille Young. And is he gonna spank? Is he gonna let the throttle go? I think he should have. He doesn't, and Dante with a wonderful interception. Plays it to Kyle. And now, Kasim 
on it. Oh, he lost out there on Baptiste. Is he going to have a shot? Yes, that's a clean, easy goal by Baptiste. I mentioned his name before the first half started. I think that's a bit of common trick curse. But Baptiste will not be upset with any of his teammates, I think. Western Eagles, I mean the Central Jaguars would be most definitely upset with the right back there for losing out on it. Very lackadaisical there. The number 17. Kristen Spice, Spence actually. Very lackadaisical in the back, I think. The coach, da Damian Cooper, will be very upset with how he, he dealt with that. But just like the first half, we have a goal early, early in the second half. So this, I don't think, <laughs> Rush, look at the skill there, Dante. And he calls for it and he gets it. Beating Joshua School there. And Natalia has said that's, she's a no-nonsense referee. She doesn't like what Schoon does. I think she, she probably should have dissed out a card. And that's the substitution of Dante there. I think Dante is off. Surprisingly. I don't know if that was the right decision there. By the Central Jaguars coach, Damian Cooper. But Glenn Walker, he plays the toes as he tries to cut back inside. But wonderful defending there by Commission. The number 13. But I think this is something that Damian Cooper, I mean, I mean Damian Cooper, All-Star Ramdu, I must com commend him for asking Kareem Baptiste to advance a little further up the pitch. And his advancement was the reason why he punks on Spence. And he didn't only punks on him, he, he scored a goal too as well. And he asking him now to swing it in, Kareem, and he does. And Ozazi with a header. Just wasn't directed on target. Very tame effort in the end. He would have expected better there, Ozazi. Good flick on and look at the speed of Kuhn Roberts. But wonderful. Ran back there from Aki Mash. That was just a just a bit soft there. If he had had a little more loft on it, might have done better. And look at Kareem Bapto. Oh, that wasn't a good ball there by Shaki Leung. Normally he plays it a little better than that, that Shaki Leung. And Kyle plays a long ball in. Wonderfully intercepted by Joel. Oh. That's beautiful from Joel. With the step over. And I must say the Western Eagles, even though they didn't start off hot and sweaty in the first half, they're commanding the ball here in the second half here. Western Eagles. They're the one bouncing it around to the rhythm section. They're the ones controlling the play. Also, I must mention, too, the high press hasn't been that high from the... Hasn't been effective, I should say, from the Jaguars. And once they go past the high press, they, they have a lot of space in the middle of the pitch. The Western Eagles. I think Kyle, Kyle, the number eight here is having a, has it have a Ogara having a boot problem. I don't know if it's because of the turf. He's switching boots. Also, too, this isn't a good side. We have.
That isn't good signs for the number 17. Kristen Spence. He was the reason why the Western Eagles scored. Being a bit too lackadaisical, a bit too easy, a bit too absent minded in the back, if that's the right adjective. And look at the speed here. He's, he's almost he eventually ran out of play, but blistering pace there by Commission. But Joel, he throws it down the right flank, tries to get it to Ozazi. Glenn Walker with a beautiful hold up play. Eventually, he lost out on it to some of the Jaguar midfielders. And this looking a bit promising here, yeah, but wonderful break up the play there by Joshua Schoonan. Look at the speed here now. Of oh, he tried to play down the inside. Joshua Schoon eventually trying to keep it into play. To no avail. Very strange substitution. It doesn't see this much. Goalkeeper change here for the Central Jaguars. I mean, I don't think it's a wise move to use one of your substitutions for a goalkeeper. But they would have their reasons for their changes. And that's Brandon coming on for Fletcher. Very strange substitution there by Damian Cooper. I would like to know why he would want to make such a change post on the, the post-match interview. When your side is 1-0 down, well, not 1-0, but 3-2 down. One goal down, that is. A bit high boot there from the number five. Oh, beautiful play in there by Kyle. And Mark just flicked it up so that he could keep it. And he has two runs forward. Plays it forward to the new lad that came on. But wonderful header there by Ash to intercept. Fifty-five minutes in. If I was the Western Eagles, I would. I mean, honestly, you, I would either try to get one more goal, or I would play and try to time manage the game. Bounce it around a bit. I wouldn't necessarily do that so soon, but that would be in the back of my mind if I was um, Ramdu, the coach. I'd want to negotiate my way out of this. Wonderful interception there by Joel. He's a bit frustrated with some of his teammates. He think they can be doing better defensively. And he awards the Central Jaguars a corner kick. I think with the introduction of the number 12, Kieran James, he has a bit of height. I think he might be the target man. For this corner kick. 
On the left flank here for the Jaguars. A bit low. One of the players went down there in pain. Back up on his foot immediately, actually. Shouted I could have him all the way here from the commentary box. And this is really dangerous here. But he eventually came back and <laughs> he saved himself, Brandon. The substitute goalkeeper and he apologizes to his teammates for his error. That could have easily been not too good news for him. Finally, it's now on the right flank. The number six. Alex Backwell, he's on it here now. He swings it in. Wonderful play. He's going to play it back to Dante. Dante Cooper now. He has been really electrifying here, but right down the throat of the goalkeeper. I must say the, the positioning of Kuhn Caesar has been ideal. He has come down with the gloves, with the finger work when needed. And it's been really an outstanding performance by him. And he has a true ball. I, I saw where Kuhn Caesar wanted to play that. Just didn't execute it well. That's a brilliant interception. He intercepted it back here now. And he's going to play the number nine. Kasim. Kasim tries to take on his opposite number, but to no avail. Good defending. Baptiste now on it. To the number 15, Jamel Hardy, the goal scorer. Hardy back on it now with a turn, a curve turn back. To Schoon and Schoon plays it now to Ash. Ash with a deep ball straight to Glenn Walker. Just a bit too deep, too high for him to control. Ash back on it now, the centre back. He plays a long ball to Ozazi. It's a brilliant interception there by the left back. And now Dante is on it now. He plays it to Kyle. Kyle lost out that midfield battle. And a good flick to Baptiste. Baptiste tried to get it. He, he actually does get it. Referee does play said play on. This referee, oh, look at the slide and challenge, but he still has it here, Baptiste. Oh, that's brilliant goalkeeping there by Brandon. But I think the referee should have. Stop the play. The, 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 the tackle was a bit dangerous there by Baptiste. I mean, I do like to see referees let the play play on and let the, the game flow, but the safety of the players, and there's a balance between the safety and letting the game flow. It's a difficult balance, and we've seen a substitution that Shaquille Young coming off for number four. Jelani Cielto coming on for Shaquille Young. And then Ozazi, he has put in a wonderful shift here. He's being replaced by Matthew Waldron. And Matthew on it immediately here now. Plays it on the inside for Glenn Walker. Good hold up play. He drops it across. And Glenn Walker back on it now. He plays it to Curry Matisse. But they're bouncing it around here. They don't want to rush it too much. Being one up. Axel fit now. Matisse and he lets it run for the number four to do some danger. Swings it in from the left side. But... Back at it now. Angelani 
Celesto plays it to Kareem. Is he going to use his speed? Wonderful tackle there just to prevent him from advancing. Kareem Quadrington just to stop the speed of Kareem Baptiste and a long ball across the park. But Joel read it and headed it out for throwing. We are 62 minutes in, I think. The Central Jaguars, they're going to want to conjure up something to get back in it. It's just one there down. And as we all know, this this has been an electrifying first half. And now we're on to the second one. So I don't see why they cannot get one back. Baptiste now, he really has, since he swapped position from left back to left wing, he has influenced the game a lot more offensively to the point where he has put one in the back of the net. Nancy now on it. I think he's on side. No, he's not. He's not on side. Jelani on it now. And now look at the speed of... Oh, the, the keeper came. And, oh. Sweeper keeper he is, Brandon. A little bit risky, but I like it. Because he smelt the danger and he snuffed it out there, Brandon. Good turn by Glenn. He's going to spank. He doesn't spank. He distributes. I think he should have let go to the Chottle there. Now it's Mark Robinson with a true ball. Puts the, his hands in his head. He should have done better there. The number 18. It's a beautiful kick. Oh, look at that skill from Kern Caesar. The flick inside. That's one for the picture books. Collector's item, that is. Mark Robinson with, with some skill. Asking for some partition from the referee, and he, he's been awarded it. Wonderful chest down there now, Dante. Cooper, he plays it now. This looks very dangerous. Chest on the long side, but he's going, he should keep it in. He does keep it in. And he swings it in with his left foot. But Akim, Ash came in beautiful. And now Baptiste with, I know he has some speed. He isn't, he isn't that quick. It's really dangerous there from the Central Jaguars players. Brandon hasn't done much wrong. He really has been composed under pressure, Brandon. But that's not where you want to lose it. And now Baptiste on it now. I think he should have played it. I think we have a... This is not good sign. I, surprised I didn't see this. But that looks like Akim. Ash. 
the central back for Western Eagles. He looks like he's in a bit of discomfort and he's been asking for the substitution by Signal NT to his bench that he needs to be immediately taken off. That doesn't look too promising for Akemash. And I'm getting intel that the number 14 here, Okichi Springer, I think he might replace Akemash. Okichi Springer being the brother of Ozazi Springer. And now Kyle, he hasn't done much wrong here, Kyle. Plays it to the, to the brace goal scorer, Mark Robinson. He has two. And I think he might want to score a hat trick so that he can see something done special for his side. But this looks very dangerous and he's on side. And is he going to slot it in the back of the net? Yes, and he eventually goes in. Luckily there by Matthew. I mean, it ricocheted off the keeper, then bounced off of him, then back off the keeper, then back on him. I mean, it went in luckily, but he's not going to complain. And look, let's see, on, see it on the replay. He has had a shot, bounced off the keeper, bounced off of him, and went into the goal. And that would be very disappointing for Brandon. But the Western Eagles, they are 4-2 up now against the Central Jaguars. I mean, we knew more goals were coming in the second half. But it's a bit more one-sided now where the Western Eagles put in a two-goal margin above the Central Jaguars. And they have a lot more work to be done, I think. That could be attested. Just a difference in the physical fitness. We've seen some lack lackadaisical errors from uh, some of the Central Jaguars players. That was one of the reasons why Baptiste put it in the goal. My apologies there. It was actually Kareem Davidson coming on for Akim Ash and not Okichi Springer. And we have this now is not a good sight. If I'm not mistaken, I'm saying I'm seeing Kareem Batiste on the floor. He has put in a magnificent shift for the start of the second half. But I think he, his legs are catching up with him. The speed is eventually catching up with him. And he's on the floor asking for medical treatment. That's, that's a good sign that we are seeing him on his, on his all fours, well, his all twos, I should say, and he looks like he's still ready and ready to go. He's a player that they wouldn't want to see him on the bench. I think he he's going to be medically treated here. But he's an on fours, I think. The Western Eagles will be playing a man down temporarily. I must mention to Matthew Waldrop, since he has come down, he has scored. 
And he has done very little wrong since he's on. He hasn't been on the ball much, but the few times he was on it, he's very potent. Now the number nine getting a feel of it here, Jelani. Glenn Walker on it now. Is he going to let go? He has another... A lot of shooting here for a striker, Glenn. Really has hold up the ball really well. Really well. Chubby, they call him. Joshua School lining up for a shot. Eventually he has it. But that wasn't anywhere near the goal to test the substitute goalkeeper, Brandon. We are about 75 minutes into the second half and action hasn't gone nowhere. I want to also mention the movement of uh, Kareem Baptiste. Now he's playing central back. Look at the speed here now for Matthews. He really has been really turning up the screws since he came on here. And it's a long ball to oh, a wonderful interception by the Jelani. Wonderful distribution and Elcock just try to keep it a bit too long. And now Dante on it now. He has a lot of space and time. He, he goes back, surprisingly. I think he should have gone forward there, Dante. He wanted to side to keep it, but I think he should have played the counter attack in football. So they're two down. So I think going forward is their best bet. And they eventually do go forward now. As that went out, yes it does. And now Joshua Schoon. Uh, uh, no, it's not Schoon. It's actually the number 15, Jamal Hardy. I must mention a lot of players are feeling, I don't know if it's because a lot of the players now came out from the COVID pandemic and they haven't, you know, uh, basically would have been inside for about two years. But we have another player down for the Central Jaguars. And he has, he too has to receive some medical treatment. It looks like he, He's getting a bit of cramp in the hamstring area. And we have a substitution here again for the Western Eagles. I think they're going to be playing rack up shop. They want to hold on to this 2 0 lead, or 2 goal lead, I should say, by introducing Jalene John.
Also two, there have been a substitution for the Central Jaguars. Um, the number seven coming on here, Shaquem Finley. And he will be obviously someone, an attacking player for the Central Jaguars. Hopefully he can inject some speed and pace into the Jaguar side. Hopefully he can be the reason why they bring one back. But Matthew's on it now and he plays it now to Jaleo. I think Jaleen should have done better there. Jaleen Johnny came on and he had a sniff. Immediately his first touch, the second touch I should say is a shot on goal. Isn't exactly a one-on-one, -on -one, but if he got over it, I think he probably would have required a save from Brandon or probably would have scored. It's still 4-2 nevertheless. I think if we want to see anything from Central Jaguars, they need to score one sooner rather than later and put some pressure on the Western Eagles. And to do that, I think they will need to high press a bit more as well as get more players forward. I don't think it's time to dump the, the ball into the box. You can still build a play. And so they do. And now we have Danzel on it now. I must say defensively, the way the Western Eagles set up for the second half, that is, I don't know if it's an improvement or just because of a shift of players. Obviously, everything done by the Western Eagles coach, All-Star Ramdu. But defensively, they have been set up and it's it looks as though it's a much more difficult for the Central Jaguars to break down the defensive lineup for, or the defensive setup, I should say, for the Western Eagles. And that's not where you want to lose it, and that's on side. Is he going to have a shot? Good lash, this tackle there. by the number nine, Glenn Walker. He too showing defensively that he can help out. Oh, that's really dangerous. Is he going to pipe it? Ooh. That's a wonderful shot there by Kyle. And even better defending by the Western Eagles. Putting their bodies on the line to defend this two-goal advantage. I think that one came from the training ground there for the Central Jaguars, but... The shot at the end was high, wide, and not too handsome. Since Jalene John has came on, he too hasn't touched it much. Actually, Jalene John is an offensive change here. He playing on top. Interesting. And Jalene John on it now, and he plays a beautiful ball to Matthew. Matthew 
The two substitutes linking up. He's gonna step over. That's beautiful there. And he swings it in. Actually, has a shot. That's a beautiful save. Uh, an orthodox save, but beautiful save by Brandon. And beautiful turn here now. Why? Kalimani is gonna go inside. Just on top of the shot. And Charlene John had a shot, but good save there by Brandon. Wonderful hold up play by Kyle. And now he's to Dante and he plays a long ball and this oh the striker just not on the same page with Dante the number 12 Kieran James overlapping run and wow good defending there good interception because that would have been danger dealt with it well Kyle with the Cruyff turn and he changes it, his direction now to the left flank and he has overlapping on his that onside. I am seeing the offside all the way up here from the commentary box and I think he, he didn't need to be offside there. He's seen the full line of players. So he should be able to tell if he's onside or off and that's a schoolboy mistake. Must say the quality of the attacking force of the Jaguars has dipped a bit in the second half. I think it's the attest to the fitness difference between the two sides. As well as some tactical changes made by Ramdu that set it up the, the defense for the Eagles a bit better. But now it's a oh, good slide and challenge there by Batiste. And he's been really playing well this game. And Baptiste now does distribute it well to Jalene John. And is he going to play it long? He does play it long now to the number seven. He has Simon Space and he is skillful with a couple of step overs. Cuts in inside. Gets it back now. Wall drop. And he's still with it here now. And he eventually distributes it now to Joshua Schoon. And actually, no, it's Hardy. And they wouldn't mind keeping it. So they does. And he turns on the inside now, Matthew. And he's going to hit him a couple of step overs. Cuts inside. Now he, he fell on his own feet and rightful call for the referee. That's a beautiful long ball. Just offside there. I want to look really close to me. Now Jaguar now. Tries to play it then. And Karim Baptiste went up and Kieran asking for a foul. The referee just let play go on. Must say she has been consistent with her calls. Not a very, very lenient referee. Allows a lot of football to play. Doesn't stop it too much. From a neutral point of view, that's what we want to see. That's what we like. That's a wonderful distribution. Is he on side? Yes, he is. He cuts back inside. Is he going to have a shot? He cuts back in. Roberts now. He swings it in. Is this going to be? It isn't. And that's, a, again, Kern Caesar, the goalkeeper for Western Eagles. 
doing the business, doing the dirty work. Very important he is. And now Dante now, he has been really skillful, Dante Cooper. Is he going to show off some of his skill? He does with a little samba in the corner flag, but he has been negotiated out by the left back. He was beaten initially, but he came back well and he played well there. Now Joshua Schoonan is it. He's looking forward for someone. He does play to Jaleem John. And he's been bundled over here very easily. Joshua Schoon spotting out a long run to Matthew. Is Matthew going to get it? Eventually he does. Jaleem John punxing on the... Biting at the ankles there. And the referee called for an, an infringement. Too much biting. We're about 90 minutes into, 88 minutes to be specific, into the second half. And I don't think the way how it's going that the Jaguars, they're just, they're trying to survive here in this game. They ain't looking very threatening. Western Eagles look more threatening and they're advancing forward now. The Western Eagles, are they going to hit them the final knockout blow? Now it's third. He plays it back. Is he going to finish the chance? And that's brilliant defending there by the Western Eagles. And now they're in the counter attack. And Kern Roberts, he has some speed. Is he going to take on his lad? He does a little bit of trickery. That's a beautiful challenge there by the center back. And now there on the counter attack and look at the speed of Hardy. Hardy's just running through the entire side. But wonderful save there by Brandon Olton. That's a brilliant save there, actually. I mean, he did keep his side in it. But they'll need a brace to, if they want anything out of this. That's a crunching challenge there. I mean, from my point of view, I didn't see much wrong with it, but I think the referee saw something that she didn't like. And she dished out a yellow card immediately here. And I think that's a yellow card for the substitute who just came on, number 14, Kareem Davidson. I think the referee, looking back at it, didn't like that his studs were showing. And I think that's one one that's not allowed. But let's see if um, the Central Jaguars could at least get some sort of consolation and make tr things e interesting here for the last minutes and extra time. Kern Robertson, he plays it across to Kyle. He has a shot, Kyle. But that wasn't too handsome there from Kyle. Wasn't nowhere close to the target.
And that's the blast for the final whistle. And that brings us to the end of the J Super Cup Group A action. That's the Western Eagles versus the Central Jaguars. They defeated the Central Jaguars four goals to two. We had a couple of goals here for the Western Eagles. Joshua Schoon scoring. Kalim Hardy scoring one as well. I think Baptiste as well got on got the score sheet. And Matty Waldron got one as well. And for the Central Jaguars, we had a brace from Matthew Robinson. Mark Robinson, my pardons. Number 18 for Central Jaguars. But that brings us to the end of uh, Action Pack Group A. It's been really ent entertaining stuff here. But don't go anywhere. We have a double header today. Hello and welcome to match day four of the Gateway Athletic Super Cup. I'm here with the losing coach, had a hard initiation, Mr. Cooper of the Central Jaguars. We're going to have a word with him to let us hear how his team went on on today's proceedings. Mr. Cooper, welcome. Thanks a lot. So, not bad for our first outing. Um, we've only been practicing, let's say, for about four sessions. So, the outing today wasn't too bad. Um, at halftime, it was 2 all, which was a, a pretty decent um, result. But in second half, I think we lost our discipline. We lost the formation. We started to have gaps between the, the um, defense and the midfield, and they exploited it a bit. We also had some guys who picked up some injuries, you know, so we actually ended up playing the game with 10 guys. You know, so... Um, all in all, not a bad result, and we take any positives out of it. Uh, but they were, we were in for a humdig of a game. There were a lot of goals. I mean, this is one of the high-scoring games in the tournament thus far. Um, some good showings from Mark Robinson, who's poised to head out there. How, what, what is your take from a coach's perspective on Mark Robinson on the, in this game? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, uh, we had some guys who really um, stood out, uh, Mark being one of them for sure. Um, we also had a very good game in the first half from Dante, who had um, an assist on, on Mark's um, goal. So, very good, very promising. Um, it's good to see the younger guys uh, stepping up to the plate and actually showing their, their potential. And last but not least, before you go, I want to I give you this opportunity to tell us about your generalized take on how the, the GA Super Cup in. You are one of the newer coaches. This is your first out in here today. How has that settled in? And also, how is Central Jaguars going to rebound? for their second game moving forward. Right, so in terms of the, um, the GA tournament, um, excellent, no complaints so far. I actually was very impressed today when I came. This is my first game in the tournament uh, and everything worked like clockwork. I mean, they told us to get here at four. We were here at four. They said they were coming into the dressing room at a specific time. They came in. They said we needed to be out by a certain time. We had to leave. It was very well organized, no complaints. And Central Jaguars, we're going to bounce back. We only practice, as I said, um, four sessions, and I know we have some more time. We'll put in some practice sessions, and we expect to be bound um, to the next game. All right, and I'm going to say thanks and all the best for the moving Thank forward. We move quickly along to get Mr. Alistair Ramdu, the winning head coach of the Western Eagles, the man of the moment. I like to refer him to the David and Goliath. It's a little in structure, but he's going to be doing some big punches. Mr. Mr. Ramdu, welcome. Hey, pleasure is mine, man. Right, so you know, um, let me tap you on the shoulder here at the start of the proceedings. You're the first coach to go two and two. Oh, that's, uh, that's some good news here coming from the western side of Trinidad. Let's get a little intake on how the camp and how the, the feeling behind the Western Eagles. Well, we, we, are, we are not really satisfied as yet, you know, but the team is coming together. Um, we had a little problem this, this evening with the warm up. And like I said to them in the dressing room when we went back in to prepare for the game, is that how you warm up is how you're going to play. And the first half showed it, you know, we were a little bit lackadaisical. But we came out in the second half with a little more intensity and a little more organization and shape. And we were able to, to dominate in the second half, you know. So um, I know it's a bit early here. I know you are very man, a man of very few words. But do you think a little sense of complacency will set in here? Because you know, you're, as we say in the big leagues, you are airmark as favorites here. Because, I mean, you, you look, you brushed aside two of the, the, the better teams in the, the tournament thus far. And you had your group. So give us a little insight, are you? Peaking too early? How is things going on your side? No, man, we we very far from peaking, right? We're trying different things. We're trying different systems in training. You know, we're trying to put the pieces together, you know. 
because of the amount of players that we have training and you know so we get in organized and, and we ain't picking we far from picking so at last but last but not least representing the western side making the journey up to the east here what is the atmosphere like how it is how you guys been settling are you getting any messages within the the group and saying coach man i want to be part of this i like this how how's been man it has been fantastic in that we we had about 30 something guys are training one day that guys keep calling me that they want to come and join they want to come they want to be a part of it because the, the fellas enjoy representing the west you know all of the guys from the west and they enjoy doing it and people here know about the western eagles and they want to come and join so we are hoping that you all have a, a registration opening again uh, so we can get those guys involved so there you have it you heard from the Western Eagles head coach, we are calling for a transfer window in the mid-season here to never know what's possible. But again, I want to say thank you. I hope you, you and your team continue your winning ways. And I hope to see you here again, right? Okay. So there you have it. That's a wrap. The first game is done and dusted. We are in for a second game here. It's going to be a cracker. The Port of Spain Capitals, as the name say, the capital of Trinidad and Tobago, coming up against a North, North Eastern, um, the Northeastern team. We are in for a cracker. Stay tuned.